So just a little review for you um, and where numbers are before the decimal and after. So if we're looking here at this number one, anything before the decimal is a whole number or larger than one. Anything after the decimal is smaller than, than one. Mm -hmm. And the different names that we give them, of course, is ones before the <laughs> decimal. Here's our decimal. And then we have tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. And you don't need to write this part down yet. You're going to be getting the part you have to write down in just a second. But that's just a real quick you know, overview of what we're going to be going through today. So now we have to ask ourselves, OK, well, how do I say these numbers? Because now that we're fifth graders, we want to sound nice and smart. We're not mm -hmm. going to say 1.234 anymore. And this is the part that you want to write down. Just this little section right here that we're circling, make sure you write that part down because we're going to be referencing that as we go through, and you're going to be able to go back to it for the next couple of units, actually. There mm -hmm. are a couple of lessons. Or do we, oh, uh -huh. so <laughs> when I say the decimal, this is where we get to say the word and instead of point. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying 1.234, we are going to say... One. Oh, look at how fancy we're getting. And 234 thousandths. And since we ended on that word thousandths, that's where we get to say that. Mm -hmm. And we're just writing it in there so you can see exactly where it lines up. Here's a couple more examples for you. And once again, um, instead of saying 3.8, mm -hmm. now we are going to say 3 and eight tenths. And once again, since we ended on that place value of tenths, that's why we get to say tenths. Mm -hmm. And next one we have would be four and, and this one's tricky because it says <laughs> six and my hundredths. Is beautiful. <laughs> and so that one we had to be careful because we wanted to make sure that since we were in the hundredths place value, we mm -hmm. remembered that zero and said it correctly. We have <laughs> seven as our whole number, so seven and 185 thousandths. Again, you're looking at wherever it ends. That's where you want to. Now you're going to try some in, just like Mrs. Bush was saying, write out the words. So go so ahead and don't... pause this, please. Write them down and then come back and we'll move on to the second part of the learning goal. All right, so now that you have um, learned how to read those numbers properly, like what you say, now how do you write what you hear? Okay, so we're going to give you some words, and you have to try and write down what they are. So for our first one, remember when we hear the word and, that's where the decimal goes. So if I hear a three and four tenths, <laughs> so if we put this in above our place value, you can see the three comes before because it comes before the and. So three and and it says four tenths. So the four is going to be in the tenths column. That looks really good. It's better than my first attempt. Okay, so three oh. and four tenths. That just goes over it. Okay, so here's a few examples. If I said four and twenty seven hundredths, what would that look like? I gotcha. Hey. <laughs> All right. So we have Four, four and, and then I've got 27 hundredths, so my 27 hundredths, the seven is going to end in the hundredths place. Okay, so 27 hundredths. Very nice. Thanks. I popped the next <clears throat> two up there so we can stop with the uh, erasing and getting in and getting out of it. So we'll just do both of these real quick back to back so you can see them as your examples. So three and sixty-one thousandths. So I know what comes before the decimal point is because of where the and is. So three <laughs> <laughs> and sixty-one thousandths. Mm. But since it says thousandths down here, I know that my sixty-one has to end in the thousandths column. So I'm gonna sort of end it there. So if I do the sixty-one that ends in the thousandths, go ahead and do that. Notice that I've got nothing in my tenths place, so I can't just leave it with nothing. So in that case, you fill it in with a zero. Okay, so the way I would read that <laughs> is three and sixty-one thousandths. 
All right, <clears throat> so our last one that we'll do as an example, if we have 8 and 642 thousandths, well, again, the easy part comes before the and, so 8 and 642 thousandths, that means the 2 is going to end in the thousandths column, so 642 thousandths. <laughs> 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 Alright, so now you guys get to again try some of these on your own. So there are three problems that will be coming up for you to try. Three and <clears throat> ninety-five hundredths. So I want you to just write that as a decimal. Nine and seven hundred and three thousandths. And again, Ooh. be careful. Make sure you look back at it and compare it to what it says and that they match. And then the last one six and twelve thousandths, so be real careful with that one. Right now we're just going to take a moment to think about the four different ways to write out different numbers. So um, we have standard form, and then we have word form, expanded notation, and then expanded notation with the powers of 10. And don't worry, we'll show examples of all these and explain them a little bit more for you. So they'll make sense. But just make mm -hmm. sure to get these in your notes and then also the example that goes along with it in mm -hmm. just a moment here. So standard form is um, just looking at the, the actual number, what you normally see all the time. So there's our number there. Um, then for word form, this is just how you would actually write it out in words and how you would actually say it. So we have 2,573 and 86 hundredths. Now expanded notation is just breaking up those numbers so you can see each place value. So we have 2,000 plus 500 plus 70 plus 3 plus 8 tenths plus 6 hundredths. All yep. broken up. And then the powers of 10 is simply taking those numbers from expanded notation and pulling out the powers of 10. So in this example, and I know that looks a little bit freaky, um, but the, this example, so 2,000 simply becomes 2 times 1,000. And that's in parentheses because you would have to do that first to get the 2,000 before you can then add it. So make sure you do these parentheses like we've got down here. Then 500 becomes 5 times 100. 70 becomes 7 times 10. So again, I'm pulling out those powers of 10. 3 doesn't have a power, you just leave it be. Anything in the 1's column, you can just sort of leave it to its own. Now, since I'm going over to the right of the decimal to a number that is less than 1, I need to then multiply by a power of 10 that is smaller. So this becomes 1 tenth. So really, all this is saying is 8 tenths is equal to 8 times 1 tenth. So you're just sort of separating it out even mm -hmm. more. And then the 6 hundredths, 6 times 1 one hundredth. So that is the expanded notation powers of 10. So you should have these actual words written down in these actual examples because you're going to need them for this. So here's our next one. And if you want to abbreviate these, that's okay as long as we can tell which one goes with which. Um, this time I gave you the expanded notation, but I did not give you the standard, the word form, or expanded notation powers of 10. So your job is to fill in the blank, mm -hmm. find what those are. Make sure you have that done, and we will go over them tomorrow.